Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and welcome to this brand new series on Tailwind CSS. Now this is one of the amazing series that we are about to launch with this video as a start. And why this series is so much special? Absolutely because I am no pro in the CSS. You might be wondering, hey Tesh, if you are not that great in CSS, why are you making the series on Tailwind? Now I am saying that I'm not absolute pro in that, but yet I do handle CSS and manage CSS in almost all of my projects uh, that I build around. And so far in the industry, I have learned that it's not about becoming the pro in the CSS. You need to know that the basics, certain basics and get around techniques of the CSS. This is exactly what we'll be dealing up in this entire series. Now, first of all, I would like to remind you, this is a Tailwind specific CSS uh, series, not the CSS specific series. What's the difference? In the CSS specific series, you learn about the basics of CSS, where you can write them, uh, what are the animations in that, how to change the background colors and par uh, margins and paddings. Uh, this is not that. This is a little different take of the CSS. So I would again mention, this is not a beginner of a CSS series, rather a beginner in the Tailwind series. Here is a quick test that you can give to yourself to understand that whether you are a perfect fit for the series or probably not. First of all, if you know that CSS could be written in line or in the head tag or in a separate file, congratulations, you have cleared the very first test. On top of that, when I say that, hey, uh, can you change any button's background color to purple? Uh, if you can do that, uh, that's it. Congratulations, you have made it to the next test. Uh, then if I say, uh, you know what, I want to make this text uh, white, can you do that? If I just say there is a paragraph inside a div, and I want to center align that entire paragraph. If you can do this much of it, that's it. That's all I expect that you know the basics of properties. You have vague idea of the things. That's all I require for this particular series. And my actual job in this series is to have fun with the Tailwind, to walk you through a variety of things of how I handle the things without being a pro in CSS. I obviously will start with how I manage my layouts, how the ma how the layouts are being made responsive, what tricks I use, and how do I actually take advantage of the Tailwind, the grid system, the flexbox, how I design my nav bars, how I design my cards, the pricing cards, the display cards, and a lot more other things that we do and have fun with the Tailwind. Over the years, I have designed my own tricks to actually handle the situation. They might not be the best, I'm not sure about it, but they are fun and helps you to actually navigate the path of the CSS without worrying too much about the CSS. So that's all the series is all about. And in the very first video, this video, we'll be setting up the Tailwind to so that we can understand what all the things it does behind the scene. And you can have a, a, a certain advantage with that. So uh, that's probably all that we'll be doing in this entire series. So let me first go ahead and uh, work with it. I'll just set up on my desktop a new folder and we're gonna call this one as uh, English because this, yeah, just give me a second and I'll share my screen. Oops. All right. Okay. Uh, let me, I'm just creating a folder. So let me share the screen. What all is there? Uh, there we go. I hope you can see the screen. Uh, good enough. Okay. Now, uh, all you have to do is first is just create a folder on your desktop uh, named Tailwind. Once you're done with this, open the browser and search for tailwind.com. Uh, you can just do that. And we'll be landing up on this very first uh, web page. Uh, we will definitely work on it, but first let's open up the VS Code. Uh, this is the VS Code instance that I'll be using throughout this entire series. Uh, I'll just drag and drop this Tailwind folder inside it so that we can have some setup. And yes, all these things, yes, I trust the author. This is a fresh machine. So that's why it's asking too much of the questions with me. <laughs> Anyways, so this looks okay uh, as of now. Oops, where are you? Here you are. Now what we need to do is, let's see how the Tailwind actually works. And at first it looks too much chaotic. And that's the reason why a lot of people just don't stay in the Tailwind zone twi quite much. Uh, it looks very, very bad to be honest that hey do i have to write this much of the css all in line but with the modern frameworks like vue react this all makes sense because you want to carry your css with the component itself once you have designed the button you want to carry the same button everywhere so the css should also follow along so this approach actually makes sense in the world where you are doing component driven applications uh, especially if you are a react developer or anything which a lot of people these days are or even if you're working with Vue and uh, even a little bit Angular, 
all they follow the same approach the component driven application and that's what actually first attracted me that although it looks really not so impressive but this is the approach that everybody should be taking and also another thing that i like about the tailwind is it doesn't take you too far away from the original css or the core css you still understand when i say uh, that hey there's going to be a, a p8 it's a padding 8 so I can actually hover on this and see exactly what they are building and how they are building and all of that. Uh, so this is all uh, that we'll be doing and learning. First of all, let's see the, how the setup actually works and uh, how the things actually works in Tailwind. Uh, let's click on the docs and we want to go on to the installation section. By the way, it works pretty nicely with almost all framework that you see around. Your Next.js is here, your Vite is here. And if you want to work with any of them, Angular, Phoenix, Remix, it supports all. We'll be going with the Tailwind CLI so that we can actually have the core of Tailwind without any framework library. You can apply the same logics there as well. So the first part is uh, npm install dash d Tailwind CSS. By the term d, it simply means to say that it works as a dev dependency. I'll open the terminal of my windows and I'll simply go ahead and just say, hey, uh, I know my bindings are okay. I'll just hit enter. It will create a uh, package.json file because everything is Node.js based and what is not these days. Uh, so you can just go ahead and have it install. It will create a, f create a fresh package.json file, but the best part is it's a dash D install. So that's a depend development dependency. It will not be shipped to the production. So don't worry about that part. It says only the dev, uh, dev dependency, which is there. Now, once we are here, we want to initialize the tailwind. So once you actually initialize the tailwind, it creates some of the configuration files of the Tailwind. And you will see a new file here which says Tailwind config.js. This is all the file which contains all the configuration of uh, how the Tailwind. By the way, if you don't know, Tailwind is something which is actually, you can say kind of a processor for the CSS. You don't exactly write the CSS, you just write the class names. And on the fly, it creates only those specific classes which you have used. So that's great advantage of it. So. Here you can see that we have nothing. It says content theme plugin. Uh, we have no idea what that is as of now. Eventually we will get. So let's go back. Now it says that inside this content, I can zoom this a little bit, a more, a little more. <laughs> there we go. Uh, all you have to say is this, the content part should be filled up with this. So I'll just copy this, go back, and uh, we'll replace this with this. Now what this is saying that I will look for the content inside a source directory with any name, whatever your name, you are uh, making this up. And with the any file name .html or .js, I will look forward as a content. Uh, the reason for that is it can only look into specific directories and folder where there could be file which writes the Tailwind. And based on this, you have to generate a CSS file which is actually applicable. End of the day, browser only understand HTML, CSS, JavaScript, no matter how much Tailwind you write or React you write. Uh, let's go move back. The Tailwind is actually divided into these three major components. The base component and utilities will be using them. So let's just copy that. This needs to go into a special directory known as source input.css. So I'll just go ahead and work with that. I don't have any input directory, so I'll just go ahead and create one SRC. And inside this, I have to create this input.css. I'll just go ahead and write this. So this will be my input.css. And all you have to do is paste this one. Now this squiggly line, uh, don't worry about this. Uh, this is something known as unknown at rules. And by the way, you can just uh, look for the settings in your VS code and can change this out. Uh, you can just click on uh, view this problem and unknown rules. I can actually do that right now. Unknown rules and there is a CSS linting of warning. You can just say ignore and uh, save this. That's it. It should be all gone. So there we go, nothing too bad, uh, just a squiggly lines. Okay, now the final line is that you have to actually generate Tailwind. Uh, you have to provide the input, which is the three ones, which we wrote just above. And based on this, the output is generated, which will be in this file. And you actually link this output.css into your, all of your HTML file. Let's just copy this command and try to see what happens. So this is the Tailwind. So if I could just go ahead and wrote it like this. This is the Tailwind CSS that is getting used. The input file name is source input.css. So if you place it somewhere else, make sure you give the right command. Then after dash O, there's a SRC, and then SRC is actually generating a file in the SRC output.css, dash dash watch means uh, you have to constantly listen for it and keep on processing it. So once I hit enter, 
it actually generates an output CSS and you'll see a ton of CSS in that. This is something known as pre-flight CSS. So basically every browser actually applies a lot of uh, flush out functionality. Uh, they remove their margins and paddings and inject their own variety, their flavor in the world. Just like Bootstrap does it, Material UI does it, Tailwind also does it. So don't worry too much. This actually looks too much, but it is not actually. The pre-flight is constant and you'll be using some kind of pre-flight or flush CSS in every single of the production grade project. So this 500 lines of code, 545 to be precise, is nothing to be worried. This is just a base CSS. Uh, it doesn't really is that much of a big that it will reduce your uh, latency or something. No, you don't have to worry at all. Now, the best part is now I can have fun inside this source folder. By the way, in the source folder, let's just go ahead and create a new folder. And we're gonna call this one as uh, test. Now notice here, in the config.json, we have mentioned that inside the source, you can create a folder and then any file name.html, I'll be keeping a track of it. So I can just go ahead and say inside the test, I can create a new file and call this one as index. Feel free to call it whatever you like. Doesn't really matter much. So I'll just go ahead and go like this and we can just move on to the tailwind test. Tailwind test, save this. And now I have to install a plugin known as Live Server. I usually have that, but this is a new machine. Live Server. And please search for it. Please, if you can. There we go. So I'll just install this. This will help me to get my output pretty easily, nicely, and fast. Now, okay, all is good. Now, right now, I have nothing to do. Uh, because the output file is not linked. So this is how you have to link your output file. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we can just come up here and we can say we'll be having a link colon CSS. And then let's just go ahead and say that my file is one directory back. I You have to link not the input CSS, but actually output.css. And what will happen now is something interesting. Let's go. Inside the body, if I go ahead and create a H1 and I just go ahead and say, subscribe my channel, I hope you will do that. Now I can write the classes. This one needs to go like that. I can go ahead and say class and I can say, I want BG dash, uh, or let's just say easy, text dash bold. And you'll search, mm, let's start with something easy. Let's start with the background. We'll go for hmm, purple, purple dash 500. And it's not suggesting me anything. I need to install Tailwind plugins. We'll do that together. I'll just save this and see what happens. First of all, I'll go into the output CSS and I can see only this much of the code is new, which is generated. And this is what exactly Tailwind does. So that's why I say it doesn't take you too much away from the core foundation of uh, the CSS, it actually generates that. So this is what the code it generates. If I go ahead and write more classes, like for example, if I write text dash to Excel, I'll just save this and I can see the output CSS. It generates now a new class, which is a font size 1.5 RM. So all I have to do is learn and understand the entire formatting of how the classes are being known. They are, by the way, pretty easy to guess, paddings and margins like P-3, P-4, pretty easy to guess. But you can see it's not generating like insane crazy amount of CSS. You are not shipping anything that's not being used. So that's the beauty about it. Uh, so by the way, at the time of shipping also or building, it also does another check that all the CSS are included, which are actually useful uh, other than should be removed. Now the, the idea is I can right click and open it up with the live, live server and I get my purple and I get my subscribe. I can, best part is I can easily come into this one. I can say class and this should be uh, text dash gray, but there is no suggestion here right now. So I should really do something about it so that I get some suggestions. Uh, and by the way, there's a plugin for everything these days. So I'll just have a tailwind and it actually gives you the tailwind intelligence. Come on, search for it. Seems like my internet is a little slow <laughs> or probably some stuff happened. Okay. IntelliSense CSS, so now this will give me all the suggestions that uh, that will help me to actually write faster code. Okay, 
I'll just go ahead and come back here. Hopefully this is all done. And now if I just go ahead and try to write something gray, it gives me suggestions and that's exactly what I want. So I'll just go ahead and say I need gray and I'll say this is how I want it. I go back, I need to refresh this and it should be, oh, I say text. I need to say BG and you guessed it right. BG is for background, there we go. So it works really nicely and I can add more of these classes. I want to center align it, no problem. You can just go ahead and say text dash center. And the best part is I can just hover my mouse over it and it says, hey, this is generating a class with the text center and the content of the CSS is text dash align center. That's the best part of it and my content is centered. So I focus more on writing uh, rather than writing CSS and tackling them with the classes and uh, all those things like selectors and all that. I'm focused more on writing and what what really matters. I'm doing this stuff rather than worrying about how to actually implement that. That's the beauty about the Tailwind, which I li uh, love the most. Uh, yes, of course, there are lots of tricks uh, that I hold under my belt uh, to actually do all these things that surely we will be taking care. But I think this is what you have to worry about. And so far, this is the setup that is there. And in the future, we'll be creating more folders inside the source and thus we'll be getting more of these things. So I hope this video gives you enough of a start about the Tailwind series. And we'll be having so much fun in the Tailwind. Uh, definitely, there's a lot more videos that will be coming up. And I'll show all the things that I use, all the tricks that I have, and we'll be definitely designing a lot of web pages and components as a part so that you can have a lot more fun with the Tailwind <laughs> rather than just worrying about the CSS. Uh, so that's it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it and let's go ahead and catch up in the next video.